Welcome friends to another r slash pro revenge video. Our first story of the day is by flightgeek24, don't cheat on your graduation lifeline. So I, 19 year old male, and my now ex-girlfriend, 18 year old female, have been together for more than a year. We were in the same class during middle school and high school now, a two year friendship eventually evolved into a relationship, y'all know how it is. We were happily together, at least so I thought, since December 2019. I thought everything was great between us the whole time, although recently, about March, I noticed her becoming very distant and barely writing first, dry texting, etc. I asked her multiple times if everything was okay and gave her some space, but it continued for the next few months. I was naturally very upset as I've been through heck and back together with her when she was going through depression and a really hard time at the end of 2020. It suddenly felt like all this time was wasted and worth nothing. I, as a naive high schooler, truly believed that she was the one. It was serious after all. We matched perfectly together. We spent about three full months crying together at night when she was going through a rough time. We had similar plans for the future, similar interests, and it seemed we were meant for each other. My girlfriend, let's call her Caroline, was studying to become a lawyer, so she was mostly into humanity subjects. I, on the other hand, am studying biochem for medical school. I apologize if this is all confusing or different, we live in Europe. She was required to attend at least one science subject to graduate, physics, biology, chemistry, or psychology. She always hated these subjects and just took them because they were necessary to graduate. She ended up picking chemistry, as I was a natural and tutored 9th and 10th graders in chemistry in my free time, and I always helped her with assignments, etc. It started as helping her before exams and assignments so she could get a good pass grade, and after her rough time, warped into me writing half of the assignments for her. In February, she started to do everything with me again though. We had online the whole time. Anyways, enough backstory. After noticing Caroline started to get distance and she never properly answered my questions regarding her behavior, I wanted to see how far it would go. For one week, I didn't invite her, call her, or text her first. In a total of one week, she had called me three times, twice to ask me about her assignment and once telling me how she felt insecure and bad. I'm not a jerk, I helped her out with her school stuff and comforted her when she felt down. Me being the naive, love is perfect lovebird I am, chalked it up to her feeling depressed again but feeling embarrassed about it. I continued helping and comforting her for the next month until nothing changed and she never opened up. I was honestly doubting everything by then. Is it me? What am I doing wrong? Etc. I tried everything I could. Eventually, I asked her friends if something happened, but they said she was the same as always towards them. I knew something was up, but I didn't know what it was yet. One day when she came over to my place, it was only the second time she did that in March, usually she came at least twice a week. We were sitting in my room and talking while she was trying out Valorant. After she went to my kitchen to make herself something, I hear a notification from her phone. I'm usually not a snooper, but I had a quick look at her screen that lit up. I wouldn't be able to read the message or who it was anyway. It was a Discord notification. I was very surprised. I knew for a fact that she didn't have it a month ago. Plus, she only plays Minecraft once in a while. She never uses Discord or anything. So the next morning, I did some snooping and, sure enough, I found a whole other Instagram account of hers where she branded herself to be an aesthetic gamer girl. Not that there's anything wrong with that. She had never told me anything about this. I couldn't find any of her friends following her on that account either. Sure enough, she had her Discord username in her bio. Curious and, to be honest, jerk me decided it would be a good idea to create a throwaway account and try to text her to see what she was all about. Before you complain to me, I know I was a jerk here. After texting her on my new account, we talked for a bit until she became flirty. We played a few Bed Wars games together, once again on a throwaway account I bought for $1. I kinda broke down and started questioning my sanity. 
I had been with her all this time and through so much crap. I couldn't believe she would do this to me. After the sadness came the anger. I wanted to know how far she took it. I found it hard to believe that she would just casually flirt with guys like this. After setting up my first recon mission plan, I found out more about her until I found out about her supposed boyfriend. At that point, I had a huge emotional breakdown and I felt like I've wasted so much time helping someone who would betray me like this. From her stories, I would later find out they were sleeping with each other for a whole month by now, starting about when her behavior started to change. At this point, I started hatching my revenge plan. I know I would not let her off the hook this easily. I spent two weeks pulling all-nighters making sure I had all my work done till the end of the year, until graduation. I spend all my remaining time creating fake chemistry textbook pages so I could make my pro revenge more believable. All of the information was wrong. I knew I had to give her a taste of her own medicine, betray her like she had me. For the remaining two months of the school year, I fed her all this fake information and made sure she got all of her assignments wrong. I knew she wouldn't be able to tell anyone she was copying off me, as our high school had a very, very strict rule about plagiarism. As much as three small cheating attempts on small exams could get you expelled. So after letting the pot stew for those two painful, awful months, I let crap hit the fan. As our teacher had to handle an outrageous amount of classes, she always checked her assignments late, often by two or three months, all at once. I knew I could use this fact to my advantage. After she submitted her final assignments that were worth a huge percentage of our final graduation grade, I told her I knew about her shenanigans that had still been ongoing for three entire months by now. I told her how she hurt me and how it will come back to haunt her. I made sure of that. She mostly brushed me off and acted as if I were the villain, as I couldn't just leave her and that she was only friends with that guy. Although I told her something was going to happen, I never told her what it would be. Trust me, she never saw it coming. One week later, the end of the year results rolled around. When we received our final grades, I was over the moon as I passed with flying colors. On the other hand, her, not so much. Due to her final assignments and all quarter four work equaling to an F, she called me crying and asked for help. She told me she wouldn't be able to graduate if she wouldn't receive at least a passing grade for this year. She told me our teacher gave her a final chance after telling her how disappointed she was. Caroline has two more months at school, with an extra one on online lessons with our saint teacher. Honestly, props go out to her. To be honest, I felt really bad for her and her situation knowing very well if she doesn't work her butt off in these two months in a subject she hated, she would have to repeat the last year without someone constantly helping her with her chem. That compassion quickly went away and I told her I would help her, but only if she apologized and paid me my regular tutoring fees. Caroline went full on ballistic after that and screamed at me. How could I do this to her? I hung up and she called me a few seconds later, apologizing and agreeing to pay me for my help. She now has two months of intense memorizing with her ex if she wants to graduate. What a weird situation for all of that to end up in. I feel like if I was in a situation like that where somebody was so backstabbing, I wouldn't want to spend two months trying to help them even if I'm getting paid for it. What about you guys? If this happened to you, would you be willing to overlook that and go through with spending all this time tutoring them just because you're getting paid for it? Let me know in the comments down below. This next story is by Disair. Block my driveway? Have fun with my dog's poop? We live near a tourist spot and parking can get a little dicey in the weekend. Luckily, we have a driveway and one car, so it's not an issue. Saturday, my husband had to pick me up from work. When we returned, we found our driveway was blocked by another car. We're pretty close to our neighbors, and it wasn't one of their cars, so we were at a loss whose it was. We were annoyed, but not terribly inconvenienced since there was parking in front of our house. So we call the city, 
Turns out, if you're not blocked in your driveway, then they won't tow. Parking enforcement deals with those issues and they don't work on weekends. I love pranks, so I took matters into my own hands. It's time to pick up the dog poop, and I tie each of the bags to the door handles. Double knotted so you can't just pull off the bags. I don't have enough poop, so I had to get some from my neighbor's house. I'm dedicated. We open the windows and quietly go about our business. The driver returns with their friend four hours later. The poop bags have been hanging in the sun. It smells rank. We hear the driver absolutely appalled at the bags. Then they try to rationalize blocking our driveway. They checked. It didn't seem like a big deal, you know. Nothing that excuses blocking a driveway. The driver looks to their friend who then says, That seems fair. Friend took the bags and driver went on their way. That driver will think twice next time they come visit. I just like to imagine that OP went over to their neighbor's house without talking to them and the neighbor just like looks in their backyard and sees their neighbor picking up dog poop just watching them collect it into a bag and they're like, what? And our final story of the day is by Tubist61, nice Snickers bar? A number of years ago, I was a paramedic in the UK. At the time, there were not many of us qualified. In fact, my pin was in double digits, showing how early I qualified. At the ambulance station I worked at, we had a food thief and he had a thing about Snickers bars. I used to like my Snickers bars from the refrigerator so the caramel was chewy, just a texture thing. The problem was, if I left one there and got a job, I could guarantee it would be gone when I got back. I hatched a plan. As a paramedic, I carried syringes and hypodermic needles. I also had a bottle of 2 million Scoville hot pepper sauce in my locker. We had a good idea who the thief was, but no actual proof. But here I was working the same shift as him. A job came in and he went out on it. I got a Snickers bar, drew up 5 milliliters of hot pepper sauce, fitted a 14 gram needle, and pushed the whole 5 milliliters into the bar through the wrapper. I went through the wrapping into the end of the bar and then popped the bar into the fridge, syringe and needle into the sharps box, and sat back. Not long after, I got a call to a job and away I went. A while later, I came back to the base and was met by another crew member telling me the guy we suspected of stealing food was in the toilets being sick and could I have a look at him. When I went in, he was crouched over the toilet, red-faced and sweating with streaming eyes. I asked what was going on and he said he thought he had food poisoning. Full of mock concern, I ran up tests on him, temperature, BP, blood glucose, and a 12-lead ECG. Of course, all was fine, so I quizzed him on his symptoms, burning sensation in his mouth, running eyes, and sweating. I said I couldn't find anything wrong with him, but could he have been eating anything irritant by any chance? He looked at me to see me holding the pepper sauce bottle. You could see the light come on as he realized what had happened. There was a burst of cheering from the other crews watching as they realized what had gone on. It was the last time any food went missing. Now let me ask you guys something. Is it morally wrong that OP did this? Knowing full well that somebody is going to go ahead and steal your food, is it morally justifiable to spike it in any way? In this case with hot sauce. Let me know what you think. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. So if you have a favorite story of the day, let me know which story and why in the comments down below. But besides that, if you enjoyed the video, please consider giving it a like. And if you haven't, subscribe and turn notifications on so you'll never miss an upcoming video. No matter what you do, whether it's just viewing the video, liking, subscribing, turning notifications on, I appreciate the heck out of it. Every little thing that you do helps the channel grow that much more and I can't thank you enough for it. So, until next time, I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll be right here next time on the Storytime channel.